So Night Wings is the first Robert Silverberg book that I didn't DNF. And it probably says more about me than it does about Robert Silverberg because there's nothing about his writing in particular that has turned me off. It's just that in all of the things that I've attempted to read, just sort of lost interest. And the, the great thing about Silverberg is that there's so much. He wrote so friggin' much that... Uh, I don't think that I've done an, an appropriate survey to make any sort of grand uh, declarations about Silverberg in general. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> uh, but what I will say is that I finished Nightwings. While it was interesting, and I think that I understand Silverberg's intention with the book, it wasn't entirely gripping. I don't know where it stands, uh, in the grand scheme of Silverberg, it, it, my thoughts on it may change. And I do think that it probably deserves one more read, although that's not going to happen anytime soon. I may revisit it at another point in the future. I don't want to suggest that it's, a, that it's a, a, a poorly written book or that it's a bad book. There are things about it that were really fantastic. And there's a quality that I've noticed in other Silverberg that I have read that seems to be in this book as well, which is it's, it's sort of, it has an adventure time feel to it. If you're familiar with that cartoon, uh, in that it takes place in such a deep future that there's a fantastical quality to things, um, and to the way that people operate and, uh, the technologies that are available and the understanding of those technologies, it creates a very strange world. And like I said, it's a feeling that I have felt in other works of Silverberg. And it's this sort of general confusion amongst the people that even they don't really know where they come from, even they don't have the full context of who they are. And what's interesting about that is I kind of feel like we're in the same boat. We like to walk around pretending that we have the full context of who we are and where we came from, but we don't really. So, eh. This book is an alien invasion story, but the alien invasion is uh, almost an afterthought. And it is uh, it is central to the plot, but it's it's not the the over... It doesn't... It doesn't grab the overwhelming attention of the narrative. It's just something that happens in the midst of the story and you follow a handful of the characters that are involved in that. But it's not an alien invasion book. Uh, it's a book about personal growth. It's a book about uh, taking a spiritual ethical journey uh, about redefining who you are. And I also, get the feeling that it was written by a middle-aged Silverberg who was pining for his youth. I think that comes through pretty clearly and I don't want to dissect him psychologically, but you know, based on the time it was written and Silverberg is a, is a fairly old fella even now. Um, but he was a middle-aged person when this was written and I can imagine that there was uh, a longing for his youth and that comes out clearly in this book. Um, it seems like the worlds of Silverberg uh, have their own logic in some way. At least it seemed that way uh, in the Magipore Chronicles, which I did DNF, uh, but I, I, I was intrigued by. And I was intrigued enough by this book to go ahead and finish it out and continue it. And I really wanted to put a Silverberg completely under my belt because it's kind of weird. I, I haven't read any. In fact, uh, as deeply obsessed as I have been in my life with science fiction, um, I don't think I ever paid Silverberg any attention as a young person at all. Um, I think that I made the assumption that he was a fantasy writer and that I didn't read fantasy books. And I don't necessarily think that that's a, that's a fair characterization of Silverberg or his writing. So, you know, for whatever that's worth, I would say that this is a fun book. Uh, I, if you, depending on where it is in your, uh, to be read list, 
Uh, I wouldn't encourage you to move it up or make it a priority. Um, but I would say that uh, it's absolutely worth reading. And so don't skip over it. I am curious, I'm very curious just as a reader, how it fits into the larger body of work, the larger body of Silverberg's work. And uh, I'm very excited about the prospect of sussing that out. So there's, uh, I don't know. I mean, the man's written like 800 books. <laughs> we'll just have to see.